Hello everyone, welcome to From the Void Podcast, a show all about Eternal and our experiences with the game. I'm Navalis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, BB. How are you doing, man? I'm good, I'm full of burrito. I'm, we're recording later than usual, and I'm full of black beans and passion, and that's all. So, hmm. let's <laughs> let's do this. Awesome, awesome. I, I, I hear that we have a, a special guest with us today. You want to you wanna introduce him? He's, he's from quite a quite the distance away from us <laughs> oh my god the man the myth the legend from across the atlantic ocean uh from me i guess for some people would be across the pacific when you fly to germany from california do you go across america or over the pacific pretty sure across america all right so for literally everybody it's across the atlantic um <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the most prolific and effective brewers in eternal history. Uh, today, he's making his shockingly handsome face reveal into the eternal community. We have Ahorn Delphin. How's it going, bud? Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Awesome. Now, I'm sure you've been getting podcast ever podcast offer after podcast offer, and you said no to all of them. You said yes. neon, no way. Farming Eternal, get out of here. Eternal Struggle, no way. I'm holding out for From the Void. Um, so it must feel good to finally have us, um, the, the the number one podcast in Eternal, reach out to you. So. I was just waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> now all you other second-rate podcasts can, can have them now that we're done with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got first dibs. It is awesome. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to chatting with you and seeing uh, you talk about Eternal with us. So with that... How has our week in Eternal been? Yo! What? Shut up. Shut okay. up, Navalis. <laughs> a very good card just got spoiled. Oh, okay. Okay. Just shut up. <laughs> wow. 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 B- BB's really being uh, quite... Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> All right, is what it is good? this card? Have you, are you looking at it right now, Ahorn? Yes. I it's so good. Well. I it's love fun. him. Everything I want. It's free attack on a two-drop. It's in fire. It's literally perfect. Okay. All right, I we're gonna to check we're gonna out. spin our wheels until this happens. Three attack, two drop. That's exactly. If this were if this were a yeti, it would be actually everything I want. One one health is like a little much, uh, or a, what's the opposite of much? <laughs> Not enough. Okay, this mm-hmm. card's cool. This card's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What a neato effect, and it doesn't have to attack to get value like fearless yeti. Mm-hmm. Okay, let, let's let's read let, let's read the card here for the for our listeners. Have you here. pulled? Is, can the people see it? I, I am was, pulling I was up. So you my wheels until you put the picture. Okay, down. you read the card. I am pulling it up right now. Give me give me just a few seconds here. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I am. Incendiary Slagmite is a two mana double fire influence, which is going to be hard to cast uh, sometimes. Um. Onslaught secretly choose a card in the enemy player's market so they won't see which one you chose. There's so many good mind games there. Uh, Mm -hmm. The next time they draw a card from their market, transform the the chosen card into a firebomb. Okay, so you get one chance to trick them up and make them take five damage. That's so good. Oh, wow. This, This card right here. Oh, I want to play this. So, <laughs> so there's so many next level mind games you can do, right? So you can mm-hmm. say like, I'm obviously gonna choose the torrential downpour because I'm playing mono fire grenadines and it's gonna ruin my life, or you can choose the second best card and hope to mind the game them into taking that card and leaving the torrential downpour in their market, right? Because they think you've transformed the torrential downpour into the card. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and I'm pretty sure it's it's good. Like even if it just was transform a card in, uh, into a firebomb, it just makes the best market card worthless. Mm-hmm. The mind games just adds to it. Oh yes, oh yes, and I, I like the art too. The art's really cool. I'm just gonna say it's I, not, I, it's old art to, even. Like, yeah. We had this before in closed beta. Oh, really? Yeah. What did it do yes. in closed beta? 
Uh, let me get it. it. It did a lot, so let me check it. Yes, please tell me, because I want to know what card this was in closed beta. But, no, no, the mind games you can play with this card, the stats, everything, I, I love it. It's it's a cool card. Yeah, so, yeah. I will put this in Stone Scar, in Skycrack Aggro, it just, it's great. Oh, man. Oh, I, I'm looking at it now. That's a good card. No. Is it? It might be. It, it, it was good in draft with Dark Return and, and Smuggler Stash. Like. I, so I'm guessing they deleted this card from closed beta because they didn't want Stone Scar to have Killer. Right? That's yes. a time mechanic. Okay. It used to be Shadow in, in closed beta. Well, what, was the oh, card? Okay. what did the card used to be in closed beta? Can you read it to me? I don't have it pulled up here. It was a yeah. five drop Stone Scar three three killer. Oh, hmm, that's interesting. And uh, it. when it killed okay. a unit, it gained that much attack and health. Ooh, ooh, that's spicy. So it like eats them up. It gobbles them up. Yeah, it was. I liked it a lot in draft. Like it was a build around kind of draft. Mm -hmm. If you ate like. A free free with it, you, and you dark return it, you had a 6 6 killer, build your own Carnosaur. It was pretty nice, but I think it was reason for like 3 or 4 bucks in game, and they just deleted it at one point. <laughs> yes. Huh. Well, you know. Oh, no, it's oh my god. And. Mm -hmm. Dire Wolf Digital just released Eternal Chronicles of the Throne. What? what is okay. That? Why is this all happening like right when? We're Wait, there? I think this is a physical card game. What? Yes, and it's only available in the US. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'll buy it and mail it to you. <laughs> okay, so they're oh. releasing a physical deck building game oh. based on the Eternal IP. Oh man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and each <laughs> one comes with a, a a ticket for ten draft cards. Oh, nice. Uh, no, sorry. I was ten packs and one draft. Man, if you're gonna sell a physical card game, just give the people who buy a ten drafts. You might sell a lot. Who cares? You might. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's gonna be uh, the dark. Also, a six expansion, Dark Frontier, will release next week on May 9th. What? Whoa! No, it's what? It, it's it's in. Read the read the notes. Hang on. This is breaking news, people. All right. All right. Direwolf Digital. It says Eternal Chronicles for standalone. Let's see here. It's Eternal is one of the most truly free to play digital card games on the market. It's six expansion. Dark Frontier will release next week on May 9th and introduce new stories, game mechanics, and over two hundred new cards. There you go. Isn't that the? Isn't that two days before the the Masters Challenge? I don't know. Let me okay. Check. okay. I think it's. But as you're looking that up, Eternal Chronicles of uh, Eternal Chronicles of the Throne it will be two to four players, highly replayable game that unfolds over 30, 30 to forty five minutes. Players will experience fast paced gameplay as they attack, block, and summon creatures in a back and forth CCG style combat. So there oh, you go. Baby Vara costs seven in this game. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> so okay real quick guys will you be will you buy this game no no not because I, not because i think it'll be bad i just don't play a ton of physical okay. board games i would like to i think i will because my brothers they they like to play games and it's another good one to add to my collection so i think i will for 25 bucks it's not a bad price so i bought clank and clank is amazing See, I need a bike link. Like everyone I sold this has played it, they love it. So okay. my my girlfriend hates board games. Like mm -hmm. almost all of them. Mm -hmm. But she loves Clank. And I, I haven't met anyone that doesn't like Clank. Okay, that that's you know, Ahorn, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and go with it and like Can I can I tell an embarrassing secret? Okay, go ahead, BB. I got Clank for Christmas because my, my family was like, Oh yeah, this is the company that makes this game that Travis plays all the time. They'll like this board game, obviously. Uh, I have not played it yet because I don't know anybody who wants to play it. No. <laughs> I have friends, Ahorn. I have friends. Just none of them that want to play a card game with me. Yeah, apparently you don't have good friends. <laughs> <laughs> when are you flying across the Atlantic? 
I'll, I'll, I'll have the eternal, uh, the eternal physical card game waiting for you when you get here. Yes. And we'll take you up on this one day. <laughs> <laughs> you have to uh, teach a lot of math to get, <laughs> to I get already the... got the, the bandage cream. All right, so real quick, Eternals Chronicles of the Throne contains 160 plus cards, four health trackers, 35 tokens, rule book, one digital code for redemption and internal card game, which is basically a draft ticket, one draft ticket, 10 digital card packs, an exclusive Curiox Dragon Totem. So a total value of $30 in free game content. Oh, free in-game content. So there you go. So they're saying 10 t- 10 packs and one draft ticket. One draft ticket, ten thirty dig- bucks, ten digital card packs, an exclusive Curiox Dragon Totem as well. So, how the- much does a draft cost? I've never paid money for it. It's five thousand gem. I mean, yeah, five thousand gem. Five hundred gem. Five hundred gems, 500. which is five bucks, right? Yes. Yeah. And then the ten packs. That's. Hang on, this is not adding up here. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's one pricey totem, is what I'm wearing. I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's is like a saloon. Is that like a fifteen dollar totem? Because like, or it no, pa- or a ten dollar totem? Because like ten packs is what fifteen bucks usually about there, or is it ten bucks for ten packs? I can't remember. So what? I'm not sure. All right. I, it all comes out to thirty. Okay. Buy a board game, whatever. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're trying to do math here. Wait, did we, fi- we did we figure out the calendar yet? When's the Masters yes. draft? Uh, it's on the eighteenth. Okay, so, so we have a week. Yes. Good lord, really. Wow, they're, they're so like, like throwing this all out there. Well, let's see yeah. Okay, so this all, our whole show is off the rails. Who cares anymore? Yeah, this upcoming is a frantic news day. Upcoming um, events, yes, May eighteenth, nineteenth, Masters Draft Challenge, Masters Challenge ranked May twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and ECQ Showdown June first and second. So there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got two weeks to brew the draft challenge. I'm uh, like, I think that I think it's way easier to get a handle on a draft format than a. Yeah. A ranked, uh, a constructed format, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's assuming it is a draft format, not a constructed format. We don't know. That okay. seems really weird to to qualify for a tournament based on your draft results and it not be draft. Yes, it's, it would be weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> what if it were sealed? I would, I, would, I would be okay with that if they just gave everybody 15 packs or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. To be honest, I would love to watch more constructed. So, you would you would rather more constructed to sealed? Yes. Are you qualified for that? No. No. <laughs> well, <then laughs> no you don't get an opinion then. Are you? Oh man. No, I made silver once though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, so, what do we think about it being released next week? Like literally in it's, seven days. Just, I mean, I love it. Great. It's more more time to figure figure our lives out. That's good. I, I I we need to figure out what the constructed format looks like for the the masters constructed challenge. So more time is better. So I, I, honest, I'm just for for change. Every change in the game is just great. Yes, and so I'm looking forward to seeing if they have the new uh, black market. Uh, the cards there and everything else, so let's just see if they can get the other factions in there. That'd be good. Um, can I be a little bit of a whiner for a second? Go for it. We're we're totally off the rails anyway, so go for yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Who cares? This show doesn't have a format anymore. Okay. Well, you just, you just when guys we've talk. Been off, just when talk. we've been recording for forty five minutes, just end the show. Who cares? Okay. Uh, <laughs> you got thirty. You got you got thirty minutes. Go. <laughs> okay. They have only spoiled multi, like single faction cards so far. Every card they've spoiled has been one faction. What? Are they not going to finish this three faction cycle this set? I don't think they would. I'm I'm so tired of not being able to play Feld. <laughs> can we? Can, well, can we just unlock to. the other half of the game, please? <laughs> this is so silly. Oh man, uh, like, I don't know. Like, I know that's right. There's like no multi faction cards. There's no. Am I crazy? Am I no, being like just no. a big wiener? No. <laughs> I mean. I, I feel like there's only certain factions you can play with right now, and the other factions you can try, and you can make you can make masters with the other factions, but you're playing with one hand tied behind your back, basically. 
I'm and... not trying to make masters. I'm trying to compete compete at a high level, right? I'm not. I'm trying. Oh, to I, I'm not even talking about that because why you can't compete in a high level with those usually. So, <laughs> yeah. Where where are you at on this, Ahorn? I think I like it. I you don't like this or delaying the release? Yes, because I don't want to see four faction decks at all. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be kind of whack. I, I don't want to see all the displays bunched together and like, no, please, please give me more strict influence requirements and like make two faction decks and maybe mono faction decks a thing. I don't want to see even yeah, that, that, that's, more factions. That's why I think after this set, I think there'll be a rotation coming with the next set. And so, because you, you really need to b b break up the uh, the power base. It's just too consistent with everything. It's just, you can be as greedy yeah. as you want, and you won't get punished. And so, anyway. I do like I do like cards. I know I know some people don't like them, but I kind of like, you know how like Cold Blood, if you play it, and it gets rid of all you, if you're playing any uh, Justice Influence, it like just gets rid of all of it. I wonder if there'd be like... Probably not now, but I wonder if there'd be cards like that to like get rid of some influence. Not not power. You still have the same power, but just the influence side of things. Like, you know, get rid of a time justice influence if you play this card of your for your opponent, basically. Just to restrict if they're being really greedy with their with their influences. I don't know. What do you think about that? I think I, Because you're I not restricted you said. Okay. I I think it would be really hard to do that without it being a really frustrating game mechanic. Okay. Well, you're not really. Like, you're, you still have five power. It's just it would just be. I don't know. I don't know. But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But I don't know. It's just I get. I I, I came across this past week like a couple <laughs> four color influence like control decks. I'm just like, what in the world? Like, come on. <laughs> okay. But anyway. It's just kind of crazy how... And, like, the person had all their influence they needed by, like, turn four or five, and it's just, like... That's crazy. It's crazy. I don't I don't really give a shit about four-color control decks. I just think, for... If that's gonna exist, they have to be... They have to be punished by aggro decks, and I'm and that still, like, isn't really a thing, which is crazy. No. It's insane. No. I, don't under, I don't understand enough about game design to know mm -hmm. uh, why that... Why, other than Hailstorm, that isn't happening, but it's wacky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I, uh, go so ahead. I think I know why it does happen. With, it's like, it's a mix. It's a mix of Defiance, it's it's Hailstorm, but it's not even that. Like, every deck is playing three drops. The three drops are okay. Now, they used to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think establishing them as two twos with upside is, like, the perfect yes. balance point. And the thing is, I think it's it's the two and three drops we have now. They are so much better than the run drops we used to see. And the run drops did barely did get anything. Like most of them are still two ones for one. The best one is still Grenadin Drone or Oni Ronin, depending on your deck. And they just can't compete anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, do we have to start printing three twos for two, for one? Is that is that the world we live in? I think we we would need to have three attack one drops to see competitive aggro decks again. Yes. I think we just need to chuck half the cards out of the game and start <laughs> over at that point, right? Well, that's the other option. Yes. That is that is the that is how rotating works, I suppose. So there is a new card that just got announced again. Yep. Breaking oh, yeah. news. Do -do 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 -do. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna tell. We don't Monty's. have to spend a lot of time on this one. Doesn't really matter. It's not a good card. Uh, Raging Fire Maw, 4 cost 2-5, you pay 6 to twist it and deal your attack to an enemy. Uh, not not, not really what anything is looking to do, right? Yeah, we, we, should, should, we, we should, should talk, talk about, about twist, twist for a second. second. And, and everything. everything. Oh, so, we haven't even talked about twist we have, yet. We haven't even talked about twist. twist. It's, it's a, a new mechanic, mechanic. okay. okay. We'll, we'll bring, bring this, this card back, back up here. Let me, let me... Wait, uh, okay, before, yeah, before yeah. we get into the twist mechanic, am yes. I missing something about this card, Ahorn? It does suck, right? Probably yes. It's expensive. <laughs> it's slow. Like maybe if you need a five health rocker and the dragon tribal matters, maybe. I think maybe draft because it's a flyer. It's a four two five flyer. It's a legendary. Mm, that's true. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. It's bad. Okay. You're right. It's I think it I think that card would be actually 
monstrous in drafts, so I think you have to make it a legendary. Yeah. Now, like, if you have a chance to pick it, you probably should, because it'll probably be pretty decent, but it's not. All right, let's look at Twist real quick. Twist mechanic. All right, Twist is a new mechanic that can be found in all sorts of units. Like most unit abilities, you spend power to enable the Twist effect. Unlike most, They did specify unit, which is interesting. Yes, not... And they, I think a Twist weapon would be kind of cool. That would be cool. Twist can be used any number of times on your turn, because there's usually... Uh, some this one costs on the raging fire mall cost six, but there's other ones that only cost two. Um, the basically the longer something is exposed to the shadow, that's what twist does. The more it changes, and each time a unit is twisted, it gets plus one minus one in addition to whatever else the twist is. So it makes it more powerful but weaker at the same time. Uh, and a couple of the ones we are looking at. Let me bring it up here. We are looking. I believe headhunter was one of the ones you wanted to talk about, right, Ahorn? about yes. all right this right here i'm gonna read the card real quick then you talk about it okay it's a one cost one justice influence two one it says it's a gunslinging gunslinger minotaur it says pay two and twist headhunter to play a wanted poster on an enemy unit go ahead yeah i i want to talk about this because i think it's a good cut like it's it's the kind of one drop i want to see it's not too aggressive mm -hmm. but you can use it later to draw two cards. It's like a wisdom in worst case. And that's pretty good. Like, if I'm paying three to draw two, I just need to kill a unit, which I probably would would like to do anyway. It's a pretty good card. And if you it can, gets... Do you slot like, this right it, into, like, Argentport mid? I think so, yes. It's like an Argentport mid-range card, or maybe some kind of mid-range, or... Combray. It's, it's a good card. We get closer every day to our Lord and Savior Argentport gunslingers being a thing. Maybe this helps. Yeah, that's too. The, the, the tribes are really relevant. Like, both gunslinger and minotaur are the worst tribes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on here. Any, what other card we want to talk about? Do you want to talk about uh, Larai? Larai? Or how do you pronounce, how do you pronounce this? Uh, I've been this? saying Larry. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> The, I don't know. I don't know how it, they wanted to be pronounced, but in my head, canonically, she's Larry. Larai, Larai, yeah, yeah, appraiser. I would guess Larai. Okay, Larai, yes. the appraiser. Okay, this card right here. Uh, it's a three cost one um, primal influence. It's a zero six. It says the enemy enemy player can't attack with relic weapons or activate relics. Pay three. It twists Lyra to draw a relic from your deck with cost equal to her health, and she's a legendary. And she's an explorer as well. Um, art is kind of sweet, kind of like it, kind of like opening a treasure chest type thing on there or anything. But what do you think about this card? I think this card has interesting applications, but um, what do you guys think? I think it's it's interesting. Like This kind of card is pretty... It's either really strong or terrible. I think it's a little overhyped. I think people are, are a little too horny about this card. I don't, I don't think it'll see yes. much play. Mm -hmm. It depends. Like, if there is a good 5-cost relic, or maybe even just a 4-cost relic. Mm -hmm. or At that the point, you've already one. paid a card and 6 power to pull that 4-cost relic out of your deck, though. Yeah, but you have a good defender. Like, an 5 blocks pretty well. Well, it'd actually be a, a for the second twist. It would it would make it a two four. It does gain. Oh yeah, attack. right, right. One five and then a two four. Like it's it's slow. It's really really slow. But if you can use the first line of text, like if the relics or relic weapons matter, or if you get a really really great relic yourself, I think it's it's worth. It. Mm -hmm. All right, that you... relic doesn't exist yet, though, right? Yeah, I, I'm yeah, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let, let's move on here. We got No Blade. Okay, this is actually kind of interesting. It's a legendary relic weapon. Four cost, three shadow influence, five three. A uh, weapon. Uh, this is when a unit or weapon goes to the enemy void. It gets minus five, minus five. Summon each unit and weapon in the enemy void gets minus five, minus five. So. Uh, Ahorn, you want to talk about this one? Because I think this is a 
This is this is interesting. This is interesting. The text on here and everything. This is basically old Steward of the Past mm -hmm. from the Summon Effect, which is it, it was great. Like the card was really really good. A five attack relic weapon can only be so bad. Like it kills yes. a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. The triple shadow makes it a bit difficult. Like you can't easily splash it. Triple shadow is the point where even three faction decks have to maybe concede playing it and say that. Well, I would have to skip this, but it's strong. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't have to kill the thing to give it minus five, minus five. It's just whenever they go to void. So you can just, like, equip this bad boy against Reanimator. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then their, their, their game plan's over. Yeah, if you have multiple ones of these in your deck, so you're just running multiple, it just keeps stacking on top of each other, so... Which is kind of cool. So if there's larger units. So anyway, it's a cool card. I think it'll definitely at least see market play. Uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely in the market. Just to for later in the game, it's just a good card. Um, one card that I want to talk about. Uh, I'm excited about Ice Bolt. Yes, this card is really good. This is um, it's a two cost. It's a rare. It's a fast spell. Just to put it out. It's a two cost. One primal influence. It says, deal 7 damage to a unit. Its owner plays a sigil of their choice from their deck depleted. This reminds me of... Well, basically, it's a more fair card from Magic the Gathering. There's a card that cost uh, 1. Did it basically the same thing, but you exiled a creature. It went into, basically, it can't be played again kind of thing. But the owner of that card would go in their library and pull out a, a mana... Or, uh, card, a mana card, and put it on the battlefield tapped. And this is basically the same thing, but um, a little bit more fair. But this is good, though. This is good for aggro. This is good for Skycrag. This is, I mean, this is everything. Control, aggro, mid-range. This is, it's a removal card. What do you think? It's not even just a removal card. It's two-cost ramp. You mm. can you can kill your own unit and get ramped. That is oh, that's true. true. That's true. In, in a yes. pinch. Yes. Um, Okay, here's my problem. Mm -hmm. When I see this card, I immediately think, finally, Skycrag can do something about Vara and Tavrod and, like, live their life in peace. However, mm -hmm. I think this will see a lot more play and a lot more utility in decks like Temporal. This is just another <laughs> card that lets them do nothing for longer. And they don't care how much power you have because they have that many harsh rules. So... As, as as much as I'm like, yeah, yetis, I'm also like, this is just another terrible degenerate card that terrible degenerate control decks have access to that are already playing Primal. Am I wrong? No. I think I think no. this is actually as, as much utility as my Champion of Fury Vadius decks are going to get out of this. Uh, decks that want to do nothing but kill units until turn 10 um, are going to enjoy this card much, much more. I'm not sure if I would say much, much more. I think it, it helps aggressive deck out as much as, as control decks. Like, <laughs> mid-range decks suffer from it. Like, no way it's good for them. But aggressive decks, they like it, obviously. It's a two-cost removal. It's pretty efficient. Yeah. And control decks, just as you said, they don't care about the sigil you give. It's just more removal. Yeah. Usually Temporal has cars that's ranking themselves anyway, so they're just like, whatever. And like you said, they have harsh rules and hailstorms and every other removal under the gun, under the sun. So, but yeah, but it's a good card. It's going <laughs> to... Everyone's going to play it. <laughs> Probably not super relevant. Mm -hmm. But it does combo really funnily with Stone Scar Maul. Because the 7 damage will have overwhelm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> because uh, you, can, you can have like a little baby obliterate. I had to think because I'm still not used to the name Stone Scar Maul. It used to be Promethean Maul in close beta. <laughs> <laughs> and I played a ton of that card. Like my first deck which was Armory with Promethean Maul as a budget card. It's still a Promethean Maul for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try and respect your wishes and uh, uh, make it go by its real name. Now that now that we know, 
Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. All right, let's move on. Any, any last words on this before we go to our next card then? I think it's just, it, it will be in most blue deck, in most primal decks. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. It, it's it's going to see play. It's going to see it. All right, uh, we have Glimpse the Possibilities. All right. This card right here is a legendary. Uh, it's a two cost, one time influence. Says cards in your deck have warp this turn, so you can just technically, if you have enough uh, power, you can just play cards off the top of your deck until you run out. So, what do you think about this? Is this like a combo enabler or what is this? Okay, Aaron, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you tell yours because I I've already made the best deck for this card. Okay, okay. sure. <laughs> so, so my first thought process always is like how bad is this card on average <laughs> like what what's the worst that can happen and the worst is you play this card and you play a power and maybe another card and that's not worth it like i i that's wisdom right it's a yes but wisdom, but, but no it, it's a wisdom you can't play on turn two three or it's a wisdom you can only play if, if you have enough power to play whatever you draw that's fair and that's quite a bit worse like I'm, I don't think that's enough. Then my next thought was, well, maybe you can play like some Praxis tokens that with really cheap cards and just flood the board. But then you hit two power in a row and you're just screwed. Like it's not good enough for that. But then um, I think it was Jaffa who was talking about it. He was talking about it in the storm list, like with Tamaris and lots of spells, and you have like Caldaran Cradle or like the Icicle Marksman, I think it's called now. You just go off. You just have cheap spells, preferably at zero, and you just draw cards, cast more spells from the top. I think that might be pretty decent, to be honest. Wait, I'm looking up the card. Icicle Marksman? It used to be Spear Chucker, but they changed the name. Oh, that's good that they changed that name. That's a yes. terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're we're definitely toeing the line with that name, is all I'll say. Um, when you play a spell, Icicle Marksman deals one damage to the enemy player. So you just kind of machine gun them forever. Yes, you play like Trailblaze, Strategize, Second Sight, just everything that draws cards. You you, you start with um, Tamaris, play Mirror Image, and all your two cost cantrips are just free. And then you just go through your whole deck. Ideally. Oh, okay. I like hmm. it. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do deck? you one better, though. Okay. Everyone is so focused on getting the power out of their deck to not get stuck on it. So they're talking about playing a new tomorrow or that five cost spell that discards power from your deck. Here's what you do the, the deck already exists, it's rats. There's a card called Lethry Cordier in that deck with the text, when you play a relic, you draw the top power of your deck. The top power! You're already thinning the power from the top of your deck. So obviously, your win condition is mask, uh, means to an end, and then every cheap relic in the rat's deck. And then you win. <laughs> then you've just won. Right? I like that, you yeah. <laughs> How do you activate the life force trigger on memes to net? You play the Dorito. Yeah, okay. That's that's fair, I guess. <laughs> also, in means to an end, you you don't actually have to gain the life. You can you just have to empty your deck, right? No. No no. You have to gain the life to trigger the win condition. Otherwise you just do um, okay. Hang on a second. I'm... <laughs> I don't know. I know it because I tried it. Then if you, okay, so you do have to, you do have to activate the life force even when your deck is empty. Yes. Um, okay, then yeah, you just play Dorito. Easy. It costs one. That works. <laughs> then you have, you have four cost, uh, scary, you have four cost Relic Man in your deck. It costs zero. Easy. I've broken it. I broke the card already. Oh, Everybody man. can stop brewing. We need to play Storm versus whatever relics 
what the name for your deck is on stream. Okay, we'll do that when the set comes out. Storm is you play your whole deck and it's burn, right? That's I don't play magic, so I'm trying to. Yes, everyone so, keeps talking about storm. Yeah, you build up a bunch of mana and then you just like combo like out that way and just either storm counters which do damage and other. It does. There's like two different storm decks, but yeah, yes, they both basically do the same thing at the end. <laughs> build things up and kill you. <laughs> and so, okay. but, so yeah. That'll be cool. All right, uh, we have a card here. Um, got released pretty soon. It's called. Oh man, that is. Don't know what happened. Hold on one second. Sizing it up. All right, we have. We have Tokus, Waystone, Harvester. It's a uh, three, cost two prime. I mean two time influence. 3-4, Explorer says the enemy player can't place spells directly on their units. Plus one maximum power. Pay two and twist tokens to increase his maximum power by one. This card is a legendary also. So what? It, this is basically, it's a ramp card. And it has upside. Big upside. And so, what do you think of this? Uh, Ahorn, go first. What do you think? It's insanely powerful. I will think every ramp deck will play this. It's just... The 3-4-3 three, four, four, three is already good. It has an upside. In, it, it ramps you. And in the right matchup, you can use it to ramp even more. Like, if you manage to dodge Vanquish and Torch. Hmm. I I think most even time mid-range decks will play this. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, like anything that's tired of getting blown out by Rakano will <laughs> we'll just play this card. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I'm pretty sure you could remove plus one maximum power, or the enemy player can't play spells directly on the units, and it would still be a good unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, people are still playing Seraph in 2019 Year of Our Lord, so this is this is Seraph levels of good, I think. It's better. It's a lot better than Seraph, I think. You think this card is better than Seraph? Yes, way better. Are you sure that's not just because Combray isn't very good right now? At least not the Combray decks that play Seraph? I think so, yes. Um, I think just, just disabling combat tricks is amazing for time at range. Ramping is amazing for pretty much any deck, to be honest. Yeah. And this is just way better than Seraph. Hmm. Hmm. It's a good card. It's a good card. It'll see play basically mid range. Um. Not sure about like time aggro stuff, but I mean it's a three cost three four that has, like you said, has upside. So and you can between this card and Larry Kennedy's is like super duper dead. <laughs> it was already like not that great. It was already in like on its last legs, but uh. But now it's done. Yeah, if Takis and Larry are both seeing play, there's actually no reason to play Kennedy's. That, that deck is gone. All right, any other spoilers you want to talk about? I think we've gone through all of our the ones that we did want to talk about. Uh, so shall we shall we talk about uh, Ahorn's deck here? And so um, which one do you want to talk about, BB? We got we got ten minutes, okay? So which do you want to talk I about? Wanna, I want to go down a trip down memory lane and talk about this blast from the past over here. Okay, okay. Let me let me pull it up here. Uh, let's see here. But yes, go ahead, Ahorn. Talk about this deck. Uh, here it is. The but <laughs> I had to look for it name. I named it something else. I was like, where is it? Now, this deck is back from how many years ago? How many? From three years ago. Speaking of Promethean Mall. Oh man, it is in there. Okay, <laughs> let, let me just let me just read this list because I had to look at this. I looked at this and I'm like, wow, this is this is old school stuff for Eternal. Um, this has. Uh, Char Chain Flail Inspire when it cost one. Yes, that was the good old days. Uh, Torch, Rakano Artisan, Roll its Favor, Vanquish, Plague, Sword of Ikaria, Valkyrie Enforcer, Armor Smith, Arik Runehammer, Rise to the Challenge, Harsh Rule, Mithril Mace, Smuggler Stash, Promethean Maul, okay? And there's no market because there was no such thing as back then, okay? Why yeah. the hell did you cut smuggler stashes to play Mithril Mace? Uh, so, when I started Eternal, which was almost three years ago, 
Mm-hmm. It, was, <laughs> it was under NDA. Like there was no place where you could just connect any networks. There was the Discord. You you had to get approved to um, to see all the stuff in the Discord. And I, when I first started, I was building my own deck. It was pretty terrible because I'm. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't really playing card games for, for that long when I started yeah. playing the tournament. And then I asked around, what what is some what is a good deck, some something unique? And you know, people told me, try Armory. It's a nice deck, and well, it is. And so I, I just I just picked a random list someone sent me, and I was looking at it. And I was, hmm. Two Smuggler Stash was the mount that we played back then. That's. Just what people decided was the right amount. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> um, and then I, I didn't have enough for any legendaries, so there used to be one Ikaria in that deck, sort of the Sky King and the Daisho. I didn't have those. So I decided to put in a second Promethean Maul and uh, two Mithril Maces because, well, Relic Weapons. And yeah, I was playing this. and. This is the list I used to get from Bronx to Masters within my first week. Let's go, baby. Wow. And I was so stoked. I never hit Masters or Legend or whatever before. So I simply just I kept playing, and I ended up at rank 2 on my eighth day, day of playing. Oh. <laughs> it was that played, right? It was the plague tech. The plague tech was was the best. Like half of the letter was like bandit uh, bandit queen decks, but low cost with all the one drops you could play, <laughs> and assembly line and stuff like that. And then the other half was dawn walker mid range decks. And everyone that played armory at some point knows how annoying dawn walker is. Like you you can't ever beat that card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, I thought maybe, maybe I just add Plague because it, well, it, it's good against Go White and it permanently debuffs Dawnwalker and zero cost, uh, zero health Dawnwalkers won't return. It was nice. great. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I was an armory player back in the day and I'm like, the Plague tech though, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I still think I'm, I'm a little bit proud. I, I think I might be the only player that ever made top ten with Bermaze in a deck. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's great. the only one crazy enough. <laughs> well, well, poor enough. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine line. Oh man, oh man, this is, this is definitely a blast from the past. When I looked this up, I was like. I thought like this was the deck that you were playing now for some reason because that's how I saw when I first went into our Discord channel. I'm like, what in the world? And I'm like, wait, one mana inspire. I mean, one cost inspire. I'm like, okay, okay. And then I, yeah, <laughs> it was great. There was actually back when ETS did sideboards. I entered an ETS with Stone Scar mid range with Market Plagues because it was when Haunted Highway was becoming popular, and. I uh, I missed out on top eight on tiebreakers, but I didn't realize I could have had the second most famous plague in all of Eternal behind Ahorn Delphin's sick tech. There I he is. Plague saw quite a bit of play in close beat. Like, a lot of decks were playing plague back then. Really? Yes, it was. Like, Fallon did play it because it, it, it's. Dawn Walker was everywhere beside Go White, so Plague was considered to be better than Lightning Storm. Hmm. Oh wow. So you just played Plague as like a backup combo with your Withering Witch, I guess, in film. Yeah. You, you, for example, my fan list, and I think most of them played like four Plagues, two Lightning Storms. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah. So if you want to blast from a past and take a way worse version of this deck now it's kind of funny saying that uh <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're kind of artists two two again we might as well just play uh, it. <laughs> okay i mean come on come on come on inspire cost two smuggler stash is six charging flail is one plus now i mean there's a lot of nerfs to this deck that happen. <laughs> so. i always i think they should give charge and flail overwhelm now i uh, i'm okay with that <laughs> i want it just 
I want it back to the old version. Like, can I have old flame blast? Why can't we have old charge lane flail? Yes. Imagine charge lane flail with uh, honor, honor the fallen. It would be sick. It would be sick, yeah. Reforge. <laughs> But it's just, I, I'm not even sure it would be good enough. Like, it would be strong, yes, but... I don't think it would be good enough, but it would be sick. Yeah. Yes. That, mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be an excellent streamer deck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, yes. Well, anyway, thank you for talking about your first deck you took to top, top five masters, okay? Not, 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 not just into, into masters, but number two spots, so... Uh, that's pretty awesome and everything. So, as we close out the show, all right, Ahorn, where can the people find you? You know, stream, whatever nope. you do, Twitter, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> He's like, nope, not any of that. So, where can people find you if they, if they want to, like, ask you a question? <laughs> well, most people might know already. You can pretty much always find me on Discord. Just, like, at me or send me a, a direct message. Like, I'm always up to talking about Eternal. Um, otherwise, I'm always in, in BB's Discord channel, it's the best place after the overshoot it, uh, Discord channel. And, um, well, otherwise, I think, oh, that's, that's it. If you want to talk to me, you have to do it on Discord. <laughs> 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 All right, BB, where can people find you? <laughs> uh, you can go to twitter.com slash human venipede. It's hilarious. You can uh, go to my stream, uh, twitch.tv slash bassoon buffoon. If you type exclamation point discord in my stream chat, uh, even if I'm offline, you can type exclamation point discord. You can find the aforementioned uh, zone of fun and caring that Ahorn Delphin hangs out in called the BB Stream Meme Team. Um, and I will be back. I have been laying off the streams this week because I've been practicing very hard for the ECQ. But I will be back next week, uh, probably. Awesome. You can find me on Twitter at WhatTheDeckHS. You can also find me at BB's Discord if you need to ask me any questions. Eternals Discord, our very own Discord from the Void Podcast. Uh, if you just go to FromTheVoidPodcast.com, there's a link there that will take you to our Discord. You can also follow and find all that stuff on Twitter as well at from the Void Podcast. So that's where you can find all of us thank you for watching this time next week there will be a new set and i don't know we'll we'll talk about when we stream we may we may uh actually have the show later in the evening i don't know so we'll see we'll bb and i will talk so thank you all for watching and i and as always we'll see you from the void later everyone <laughs>